कर लो Today we're looking at Bergman's film, This Can't Happen Here, also known as High Tension. Scream the ugly? Do you have seen? That calm do. With midnight. We were also a little for seeing other. No? No? Oh. Det var väntat. Otålig. Mycket otålig. Kom inte till mig sedan då. Åh, oh, jag kanske missförstod. Trött. Du leker med mig. Förr tyckte du alltid om att leka. Du har förändrat dig. Skada. Vad är det med dig, Vera? Du gav mig ett löfte. Om vad då? Om far och mor. Vad lovade jag då om far och mor? Du lovade att hjälpa dem över hit. Jo, det gör jag. Nej. Är du alldeles säker du inte förväxlar mig med någon annan? Riktigt. Nu minns jag. Jag lovade. Now this is a film that Bergman is pretty ashamed of. There's a huge backstory to this because he actually pulled it from the market per se. In fact, he pulled it from everywhere. He's put it in a vault and his hope is that no one watches this movie ever. Sorry, Bergman. Uh, now, there is a lot of trouble finding the film and we're going to get into that. But one of the really great things about this movie is that we were really eager to see why this was so bad, why he hated it quite as much as he did. And what we really found is that it wasn't quite as bad as we had imagined. Not at all. Uh, there was so much uh, publication about how notoriously bad it was, quotes from Bergman, how it should never see the light of day, the amount of influence he exerted in actually getting it pulled from cinemas um, after it was publicly released, and so we anticipated some kind of monstrosity of... Epic proportions, um, perhaps. Epic proportions, <laughs> yes. But there's a, there's a pretty interesting story behind this. He, this wasn't a project that was uh, a love of his. He took the project for money. Completely for money. It was a pure commission at the time, actually, in the 50s. The Swedish cinema was going through a strike, uh, almost a year-long strike. And so he was extremely hard up for cash. I mean, the man was producing commercials for like soap opera spots and grateful for the job. So when this opportunity came along, he took the commission, and it was very much against his whole artistic process. In fact, it was a pretty much a hands-off project, aside from yes. him being on set and yeah. you know, so controlling the directing side of things. He didn't get to pick the cast. Right. He had no involvement in the script. He, I mean, I think the most influence that he possibly had was he brought along his cinematographer, and that's about it. Right, and I think that it really shows in the film. What we get here is more of a Hollywood project than you would ever expect for It's totally formulaic. So we're talking 1950s. Um, this film was to be released in Sweden and planned for the States, although it never made it. And it's an anti-Soviet Cold War formula film. Um, but other than that, it's, it's, it's pretty straightforward. And uh, so we, we were kind of talking about where we would go with this discussion today, and we sort of shot this a little bit differently than we usually would because we don't really think it fits into the Bergman artistic canon, per se. Um, no, there's not a lot of creativity. Right, and he, partly because he's ashamed of it. It doesn't look stylistically like one of his films. Thematically, it doesn't really fit into what Bergman was interested in. No, not at all. I mean, it doesn't talk about any of his core themes that he's been developing over the past few films death, morality, socioeconomic concerns. He's not a political filmmaker, and this is very much a political propaganda film. So um, I think he was alienated by the project that he took on, and his dislike for it is quite evident. And also, we, we were noting when we watched it that it kind of looks like a Hollywood movie, and it, you know, down to uh, the way that certain shots are framed, and particularly um, the, the, 
the, the, the vehicles, yeah, the fact that there are cars all throughout this movie and it climaxes, <laughs> <laughs> it climaxes at this sort of chase scene that just seems yeah. so uh, against what Bergman had been doing He's before. He's never done that before. Um, and a question about this film is the fact that he has put it away. Um, it sort of raised some ethical questions for you and I um, when it comes to being an artist. When you brought that up, it, it really made me ponder because I didn't quite think of it that way. I still think that an artist, as a creator, should have ownership of their work. If he made something out of desperation and it really does affect the traje trajectory of his career and his vision, I think he should be allowed to influence what happens to it. But at the same time, for for us, we wanted to see every Bergman film in order from his first to his last, and this is one of them. Um, it was really hard to find. In fact, at certain points, we didn't think we were going to find the movie at all and would have to hop over this. Luckily, we did find it, um, and I don't think a lot of other people are going to because it really... It was a pretty deep search for you. Right. It's been on TV a handful of times. Uh, it was released on VHS at one point. Of course, that's not available anymore. It was never put on DVD uh, in any country, as far as I know. Um, yeah, and he banned any kind of theater releases. Right. Of it. The only time it was shown was after he died. His son uh, agreed to have a public screening, uh, I guess in part to honor him and also for people to get a glimpse of this movie. Um, it reminds me in some ways of George Lucas and the Star Wars series. It's not entirely the same, but Lucas has basically allowed... Nerd. Yes, nerd. Okay, okay. <laughs> but I'm not a big Star Wars fan, but okay. hear me out, hear me out. Um, the movies, as they originally were, have been allowed to deteriorate, and Lucas didn't like them as they were. Um, instead, he likes these special editions. So we don't have the original Star Wars movies without these fancy special effects and new scenes. But, uh, I mean, it's the same thing. He has gotten rid of it, and Bergman locked his away. Um, is it right? Can an artist do that, really, ethically? In terms of the broader picture of history? It's a good question. I mean, I think... For example, with the Star Wars movies, the the issue is that people have made a connection with those films when they were first released, and it's become um, a nostalgic kind of memory for people. They've taken yeah. ownership. They've made a relationship with that film, and so to be, you know, robbed of it, yes, that's kind of wrong. Um, and this isn't the same with Bergman's movie, right? Bergman's film was one pebble amongst many at the time of these anti-Soviet propaganda films that were being produced and mass manufactured and released to the public. So, I mean, really, okay. this little blot from history... We're going to have to agree to disagree on this, I guess, because I think it I'm should right. be out there. I think, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think that it should be out there. I think we should be allowed to watch. And you were almost as eager as I was to see what this was, was all about. I was curious. I mean, like, at this point, if somebody says it's, like, this monstrosity of a film that they're so ashamed of, like, I'm expecting something juicy in, in, and, in the end. And it, it wasn't. It wasn't, you know. So, um, it, the question, I guess, for Bergman fans is, do I need to go see this movie? Do I need to seek it out? Is it worth the effort? You say... No, right? No, I say pass. I mean, it didn't surprise us one way or the other, and I think just, like, reading a summary of it is all you really need if you're even interested. Like, it's it's, it's not purely... some kind of Frankenstein of a movie, you know? It's not, you know, Bergman chasing his monster and trying to kill it. And it really doesn't, it really doesn't, I guess, put a whole lot into perspective for his career. It was so separate from everything else he was doing. But still interesting. Kind of cool to see I think that's where we... In hindsight, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll disagree slightly, but... Uh... Yeah. I think it's good to make note, but we are much more looking forward to the next film where, you know, he's not so hard up for cash, and he's actually doing a project again, which he's really... gets a chance to be very creative in. Right. And I think, if I remember correctly, it harkens back to um, a very early youthful short story that he wrote, which then he kind of evolves. Yeah, so. Summer Interlude was actually shot before... Uh, this can happen here, right. um, and uh, that's our next feature. So yeah, so we're not we're not going to spoil it for you. We'll Spoiler alert! Check that one out too, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel, and and also we want your feedback. So you know the the little chatty chat we had about integrity and artistic intent and public ownership of works of art. We we'd love to hear what you think as well. So please comment, and uh, if we disagree with you, believe me, we'll let you know. And thanks for breaking down Bergman with us.